Hello, my name is Michelle Williams and I'm a radiologist from the University of Edinburgh. This video was put together with the help of Dr. Jeff Carr from Vanderbilt University. I'm going to talk today about cardiac findings on chest CT. On every routine non-ECG gated chest CT exam, the heart is an integral part of what you as an imaging physician see. And it can help patients and their physicians understand their health status and identify any diseases. Let's run through some of the top conditions of the heart that you can identify on chest CT, starting from the outside and working in. Here we have a CT of the heart. It was from a study looking for pulmonary emboli. The pericardium here is high attenuation. This is a hemopericardium or blood in the pericardium. This patient was having a non-ST elevation myocardial infarction. Hemopericardium can also occur with other conditions such as aortic dissections and malignant pericardial disease. Here you can see the pericardium is thickened and irregular. This is a classic sign of a malignant pericardial condition. The other concern is infection. Here is a patient with a large subdiaphragmatic abscess and two days later, they developed this small infective pericardial complexion. So pay attention to the pericardium. It's easily visible on chest CT and easily missed. Cardiac CT is now routinely used to assess patients with aortic valve disease, particularly prior to transcatheter aortic valve implantation. This is a dedicated CT showing calcifications in the aortic valve and the left out ventricular outflow tract. However, regular chest CTs also give you a good view of the aortic valve calcification. Here is a regular chest CT and you can see a very calcified aortic valve. By going in the coronal plane, you can make sure that these calcifications are on the aortic valve leaflets and not in the wall of the aorta. Why is this important? Well, aortic valve calcifications can identify patients with moderate and severe aortic stenosis. You don't need to measure the aortic valve calcification, but on both contrast-enhanced and non-contrast CT, you can classify the calcification visually as mild, moderate or severe. If the referring provider or patient don't already know about it, the further assessment for potential aortic stenosis is simple. They can listen with a stethoscope for a murmur or evaluate with echocardiography. Other cardiac valves and cardiac chambers can also sometimes be assessed on routine chest CT as well but there isn't time to go into that today. One of the most important things that we can comment on in the heart on routine chest CT is the coronary arteries. When we do coronary CTA, we use ECG gating and we optimize the technique to see the coronary arteries. When we're doing routine chest CT, we don't do these enhancements, but we can still see the coronary arteries. In particular, let's talk about coronary artery disease and coronary artery calcium. Coronary artery calcium is one part of the coronary atherosclerotic plaque and can be easily identified on chest CT without ECG gating. It can be seen on both contrast enhanced and non-contrast CT. On an ECG gated CT, we can do measurements and work out the calcium score, but on a non-gated CT, we can assess it visually as none, mild, moderate or severe coronary artery calcification. This can provide patients and their physicians with extra information about the presence of coronary artery disease and cardiovascular risk. This is a 53-year-old female patient who came in for a non-contrast chest CT. Here are some white dots in the LED and in the diagonal branch. This is coronary artery calcification. You've taken somebody with an unknown risk for coronary artery disease and because they have coronary artery calcification and they're under the age of 60, they've moved to a higher risk threshold. This information could alter their management, including the need for preventative medication. As CT scanners have gotten better and better, it's common to have good imaging of the coronary arteries on routine chest CT or on CT pulmonary angiograms or assessments of the thoracic aorta. While you would not use this as an alternative to CT coronary angiography in patients who need CT coronary angiography, it's still important to look at the coronary arteries on these scans in case there are important findings. For example, here is a patient where you see the aorta, the left main coronary artery, and then you see that there is dropout of contrast. This is where an acute dissection of the coronary arteries has occurred with occlusion that is causing this patient's chest pain. Many people also have coronary artery bypass grafts and routine chest CT with contrast is very good at looking at these because they don't move very much. 
until you reach the anastomosis, which can be more challenging without ECG gating. So that is the top things to look at on routine chest CT. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Eric Williamson, past president of the Society for Cardiovascular CT. Thanks very much for taking the time to view this video from SCCT's Referring Physician series regarding the appropriate application of cardiac CT. I hope you found it helpful for your specific practice as well as for your patients. Please join us for other lectures from this six-part series. I'm confident they will be equally as enlightening. See you then.